let's make an ESG fund together. So you cannot only, we don't only have to agree on, um, so here, we don't have to, we don't only have to agree on what ESG criteria we would like to use, you also have to agree on what industries you would like to invest. So pick the industries that you would, that you would invest, you know. Oh, it's really interesting, yeah, okay, nice changes. Just pick the industries where you think, like, you know, this should be, you, you want to be invested, and, you know, the industries where you don't want to be invested, you, you, you don't pick. And then we basically get, we basically get a picture. Yes. Are you finished? Let's lock it. And let's show the results. Oh, no. No, this is the wrong one. Here. Okay, let's. Um, no. Do we see the results? Yeah, you see it. Okay. So we would we would make a fund together, our own ESG fund here in this room, that would focus on technology and energy. Has a little bit of industrial healthcare. Has very little retail. Has about you know still a little bit of financial services. Now the, the next question is, you know, try to picture that. This is our fund. We execute this. We, we use this as a weighting for the industries on top of the ESG factors. Let's go to the next questions. Assuming you could invest in this fund, would you invest in this fund? Who would have invested in that fund that we just agreed on? Our criteria, our selection of industries. So someone would not invest? <coughs> Most of you would invest. It's probably one learning here is already if you do something yourself, you're much more likely to invest. It's actually my point that I want to make for today. Um, now, the next question is, those that say maybe, you know, think about the reasons why you would not invest. And let's try if that would work. Now you can actually enter, you can actually enter words. And um, I'm just interested to see what are, sort of, what are the arguments that would speak against investing in that fund. Is there anything that comes up to your mind? You don't have to answer. We can also just skip it. I was just wondering if there, if there are things that come to your mind why you would not invest in this fund. That's, that's a good one. Not enough information. I should actually stop here because that's the point I want to make on the next. <laughs> Too little focus on financial services. That's a very interesting one. Can you also upvote other questions? I think you can. I don't know if it works, maybe not. Energy market is not spayful, not specific enough. Field that I want to exclude, negative screening. You would like to add that. Sectors don't say that much. There are several companies. For me, real estate is more important, not clear, if really sustainable. <laughs> it does not only depend on the industry, but also on other factors. To a little focus on financial services, not enough information. Technology is a very broad term. We keep it, I keep it actually, I keep it um, uh, broad uh, because then it's a lot easier to answer it in a session like that. Uh, let's go out there into the market and, where is our, uh, here is, um, and look at real examples. I went to BlackRock, which is the largest um, ETF provider of uh, ESG funds. I searched for equity, you know, if I can invest in equity, sustainable, you know, funds basically for you. This is what I selected. And to my big surprise, there are only five funds. Maybe I did something wrong, could be. But, you know, I tried it again, I deleted everything, and I selected again, and, you know, the biggest provider just has five different funds. And when I wanted to know, you know, fact sheet, when I download the fact sheet, I only got a fact sheet for three funds of the five. <laughs> So it's really, it's, it seems to be nascent, uh, to, to, to say the least. I mean, there was just very, very little information there. I, I downloaded the fact sheet. Turned out that, you know, they are a little bit different, but the fact sheets are all the same. Um, I, I'm going to show you what kind of information you get when you invest in an ESG fund. And for those that, for that person that said not enough information, would like, uh, dig, uh, like to dig deeper, this is really all you get. A diversified exposure to large and mid-cap companies in the European Monetary Union while screening out companies involved in controversial business areas. <laughs> so the good thing is you have now experienced what it means to select 
criteria for screening. And we have also experienced what it means when we exclude certain sectors. For many people, this is just not necessary. In addition, we have you know, a greater weighting on companies you know, with high ESG scores. So this is one information you got, and I was desperately looking for more information. And it turns out I found this. 18% of that fund in Europe is in invested in financial services. And if you remember, if you remember that our weighting for financial services was, was lower. There was a couple of people that didn't even want to have financial services in their fund. So when you buy this fund, you're making a, de a decision, a sector decision, that may not be your decision at all. Has anybody an idea why financials are there on top? Just out of your stomach, you know, there, what, what could be reasons? They don't pollute much. Yes, they don't pollute anything. They, for them, it's very easy to promote uh, social issues because they have all rich employees, so they can promote women a lot better than others. You know, of course. Uh, for that reason, financials have also reputational issues, so they all want to be the good guys in the ESG arena. So you get a lot of uh, a lot of companies there, a lot of companies uh, in the financial sector, and. If you go to the technology, you know, which for us was dominant, and energy, it's only 5% in energy. So you're getting something completely different than what you think you got yourself into. And this is a big problem. As a matter of fact, you know, at this point, uh, when I drafted this uh, presentation, I, I, uh, I thought, you know, by now it should really be clear you have to pick the stocks yourself. Because you know you cannot rely on ESG scores and you cannot rely on funds that have been created based on those ESG scores because they are um, decisions about industries and regions and companies that may not be the same as yours. And then I anticipated then that somebody would say buy an index fund, and uh, that you know uh, that reminded me of my very early days when I had to defend my approach of self-investing, self-picking of stocks, I looked at those e index funds, uh, typically ETFs, you know, it's a more popular uh, term, and I tried to find out how well do those industry, those index funds represent a country. So how well does the Swiss market index, the SMI, represent, <laughs> you already know the answer, the Swiss market, and what you see here is this is the Swiss market index, blue in its rating, and red is the gross product, the gross national product, domestic product of Switzerland. It basically means uh, when you invest in the Swiss market index, you have more financials, you can actually not see that, more financials than you think, you have a lot more healthcare. <laughs> so it should actually be not called the Swiss market index, it should be called the Swiss healthcare index plus a little bit of industrials and banks. You know, this is really what it should say. And you also, that's, that's a, chronic, a chronic problem of any index fund that you can buy out in the market. There's a lot less services than there actually are in a country. Any idea why there are less services on the public market than typically in a country? I have an explanation, but it's really just mine. It's not research or anything. I think service companies have it a lot easier to raise capital. They don't have to go to the public markets. It's typically enough you can actually work with your own capital because you don't have, it's not very capital intensive. While banks need a lot of capital to grow, and healthcare needs a tremendous amount of capital, so that's why these companies go public. In other words, the companies that are public on the markets are not the ones you would choose, they are the ones that need the public money. So an index fund is really actually a reflection of something completely arbitrary, and you think that happens just in Switzerland, let's go to the Standard Poor's 500 index, and it just looks very, very similar. Also here we have an overweighting of financials, we have an overweighting of healthcare, industrial, I left away other sectors. Right now they have a, this is also about three or four years old when I did this, right now they have a heavy overweight of technology stocks in the Standard Poor's 500. This now is the biggest index, the biggest market worldwide. But when you buy this market, it should not be called the Standard Poor's 500. It should be called the Standard Poor's High Tech Index because they're so much dominated. You know, in the last 10 years, only five companies that hold funds, you know, for Facebook, Apple, etc. 
um, uh, they have generated so much return that without those five companies, this, this, the index would have actually depreciated in value. So you're getting something completely different. You're not getting really what you want to get. And to come back to Switzerland, how it looks today, uh, when you buy the Swiss market index, uh, it's, it's mainly dominated by these, uh, these three companies. So it's not at all a diversified you know, portfolio. If you go to your bank and you buy this as your portfolio, they will probably give you a call and say, you are too heavily exposed by the index fund. <laughs> You know, they will probably say, you should not just focus on three stocks. You should have more of an equal weight approach to investing. And this is actually something you cannot do with indices. Because indices are always weighted by market capital. So we, you will always get the stocks that have a heavy market capital in an overweight. That you would never do. If I ask you now, how would you weight your portfolio? You know, something I've thought about, how would I weight my portfolio? And you probably haven't, so I think you might answer. I would probably weight it by the profit they make, for instance. You know, I mean, companies that make more profit at a higher way, or I would weight it by the sales they make, or by the number of employees or the number of invested capital. I would never come to the idea to weight the portfolio by the price of the stock. It's just something totally unnatural. And why do you think that happens so much uh, uh, with funds? It's also an easy answer. It's a lot easier to make a financial product if you weight the stocks by market cap. Does that have anything to do with you? You're getting closer and closer to your personal sustainability? I don't think so.